Today, I wanna to share with you five things that aren't typically made exclusively for RVs that make our RV life that much easier. How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Today, we're gonna to talk about five items that make our RV life just a little bit easier. And I would love to hear some of the ideas that you guys might have out there along with these five ideas that I'm gonna share with you because uh, seeing what other people use as you travel around, sometimes you find those things that it's like, oh my goodness, I would have never thought to use that in that application. So uh, let's dive into five of the things that we are currently using. The first one that I wanna share with you was shared to us by our friends Rob and Shelby and they use an electric tea kettle. Now, an electric tea kettle may not sound like a big deal, but when you wanna boil water fast and you're already in an RV park and you've already paid for the electricity, so it's not gonna cost you any more to heat water up an electric tea kettle, electric kettle, um, it's a better option than using the propane that would take longer. Why not just use this? So the kids will use this for making oatmeal in the morning, uh, we can use it to, to boil water faster for whatever recipes we need or uh, coffee, whatever you need, this thing gets the job done fast and works really well. Now it just sits on our counter here in the RV and it rides really well. It's not like we have to move it when we drive anywhere, we don't have to uh, stow it away or store it anywhere, it rides pretty nice. We don't obviously drive with it full, but this thing will boil water in a hurry and works out great for a lot of applications. Let's move on to number two, and number two is the one that I am sitting on right now. It's not necessarily a chair, but it's our ice chest. This ice chest is pretty cool. My in-laws had one exactly like it, and uh, I, I borrowed it like every day for like ever until they got a second one. So this thing is uh, a Canyon cooler. Um, it's, it's a lot like a Yeti, you know, you're gonna notice the, the latches are a lot like that, the seal, um, the way this thing is made, it's pretty stinking cool. Um, so it's, it's a small one, so it fits most places that we need it, use it, it stores away easily here in our, our fifth wheel. And a few things that I love about it, well, for one, it's made pretty close to my hometown. It's made in Arizona in Flagstaff. That's where the, the company is based. So, I mean, that's pretty cool right there. But the way the thing functions, I, I've always heard so much about Yetis and these type of, of ice chests. This uh, compares very, very well to the Yeti. Each manufacturer is gonna say that they do better than the other one. But in a real world test, we were crossing the Arizona desert in the middle of summer. The inside of the fifth wheel as we were traveling was over 100 degrees. We had frozen meat in here with some ice on it. It stayed that way for multiple days. We didn't have to, to worry about it. it. It did fantastic. So if you were wanting to store some of your, your meats like steaks and chicken, I wouldn't necessarily do like ground beef or hamburger patties. Those are gonna thaw out a little bit faster in extreme conditions. Uh, but you really can extend how much frozen things you can take out beyond what your RV freezer might be able to hold. And one of the bonus things that I like about this ice chest is it's, like I said, it's small enough, but it's a perfect height for sitting on like most ice chests are. But we can pull it into our, our RV when we have people over and it provides an additional seat, which might sound a little hokey, but it actually works out pretty good. So let's talk about number three. And number three is these radios. They work out really well for all kinds of stuff in an RV. So here's the thing that I like about these radios. I, I always thought they were uh, great for kids, toys, you know, to play around with. They're great for like uh, police stakeouts or like security teams. Control, this is Alpha Team. Looks like everything is clear over here in the Eastern Quadrant but they're also good for being able to, to communicate in RV parks where you don't have cell service. Two of the main ways that we use them is if the kids are going off to, to play, like there's other kids in the RV park and they're off having fun, um, we're able to give them um, a set of radios. We'll give one to each of them. And that way, if we need to call them back home for dinner or something like that, we don't have to go searching for them. Or if we just need to be able to communicate with them or they need to be able to communicate with us, 
these work out great. And one of the biggest reasons that we did get these is when we get to those RV parks and there is no cell service and we need to back in the trailer, I love being able to have Chris outside to, to help guide me in and be my eyes outside so I don't run into anything that I shouldn't run into. Not that there are things that you should run into, but you know what I mean. She helps me be able to safely guide our trailer in. Most often when we get to an RV park and it has cell service, I'll just put my phone on speaker, lay it down, and uh, she'll be outside on her phone. But there are times where there isn't cell service, like I said, and these are excellent. And they're rechargeable, so we just pull them off the charger and use them. We don't have to worry about dead batteries and stuff like that. As long as they're on the charger, we're good to go. And number four is uh, the Instapot. Now, I'm not the, the best cook, I'm not the best in the kitchen, but my wife is amazing. The things that she makes, the meals that she produces out of this tiny uh, kitchen, this, this RV, is absolutely phenomenal. So uh, we'll use the Instapot actually quite a bit. And I'm sure you've seen other videos about the Instapot because you can cook all kinds of things in this, like... Uh, potatoes? Potatoes. Eggs. Eggs. Rice. Rice. You can saute things in here. Can you believe that? Yes, you can use this to saute. What else? Um, soup. Soup. Chili. Chili. Did you say you could just use it as a slow cooker? Yes. You can do that. Slow cooker. Use it as a slow cooker. Everything she said is what you can do in this and more. But those are the main ways that we practically and real world use it. Now we don't use all the function on there. Like I know some of them make yogurt and stuff like that. And that's just not our cup of tea. Cup of, no, that's, we don't, we don't do that. So those are the things that we actually use the Instapot for. She is the best. Thanks hon for helping me on that one. <laughs> I love her. Uh, coming in at number five, is our water filtration for drinking. Now I know that uh, Berkey's are like all the rage out there. Everybody loves the Berkey. I wasn't a big Berkey fan. So um, I wanted to figure out a way to build a better, bigger Berkey that wasn't so bulky, but I didn't. So we put in an RO system for our drinking water. Now I know that there's probably a handful of people out there right now typing away like Berkey's are better, Berkey's are the best, Berkey's the, the best thing for RVers. Now that, that's great for you, but for us, I really wasn't into the Berkey. We tried it and the RO fits what we need really well. Now I'll be honest though, the, the RO does have some drawbacks and isn't the best for all situations. Now for boondocking, um, it's not gonna be making you that water while you're out there boondocking because they're not the most efficient when using water to make the, the clean water, the RO water. Uh, there is some waste that goes along with that. So that's why they're not the greatest when you're boondocking. But for us, our system, it can hold two gallons of RO water in the system. And if we're going out where we're not gonna have hookups, we'll fill up some jugs for drinking water out of our own RO system. Now we used to go to like an RO kiosk and fill up jugs every, uh, every week, every few days, it felt like at times. Uh, but now we don't have to do that. It's just right here in our trailer. And if we're in an RV park, it's making drinking water and we don't even have to think about it. We don't have to move the water filter off the counter when we're traveling or moving. We don't have to secure it in any way. It's already been installed and secured, done once, and we can just enjoy and use the water. So that's why we went with an RO system. It may not be for everybody, but works fabulous for us. So that was our list of five things, the electric tea kettle, Instapot, radios, ice chest, and RO. Uh, I would love to hear the different things that you guys use that make your RVing life easier or are one of your favorite things that you use for RVing that maybe people don't always think about. So leave that in the comments and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hopefully we will see you on the road or in the next video.